What's up everybody, Yogi here. Today I'm going to be doing Masked Man's SS Rank Guide, giving you guys all the details and info I found out about this so that you guys can go ahead and complete it yourselves. When it comes to his 50 turns and under mission, it's simply not happening for me. I do not have the right units and I cannot find any Max Duke Wisdom Minotaurs on my friend list, pretty much leaving me to have to resort to resetting and criticals to try to beat him. And you know, at that point it's not even a guide anymore. So starting off on map 1 here, he's going to put up 100% resistance to Jisu Sealing, Slip Damage, and Immobilization, leaving you with pretty much just attack reduction if you want to try to inflict him with something that will be useful. And then when it comes to his attack pattern, every two turns he's going to have that continuous go off where he's going to perform two regular attacks and then two Jutsus. The second Jutsu will target a Wisdom character if they are out on the field. Otherwise, he's going to continually target whoever is the closest to him. Now, the last thing I didn't talk about is that Masked Man has a constant 50% chance of substitution on map 1. This is the only map where it's going to be a problem for you. And also, this is where the composition of your team comes into play. Now, going over my units and everything that they do, I have PvP Tsunade because she has her 300 self heal, she has a field heal, a buddy heal, and on her jutsu she can ignore substitution. So that is going to ensure that I'm going to hit Masked Man when I use that jutsu. For Madara, he has four of his dupes, so he has damage reduction along with his dodge ability, so he will be the main one stalling against Masked Man. Another thing to keep in mind here is that when he uses his jutsu, he can chakra recovery, seal you, which, you know, always annoying type of thing. But the other thing that Madara brings to the table is his Jutsu ignores perfect dodge and substitution while his ultimate ignores substitution. So I can use either one here and I'm going to for sure get the hit and then later on I can use just his Jutsu to remove Mass Man's perfect dodge because that's what he's going to be using instead of substituting from map 2 onward. When it comes to Kaguya, she's arguably for me one of the best units to bring here because she has 700 self heal. Her ultimate is full map so you can use it anywhere on the map from a safe area and also it ignores substitution. So it's perfect for map 1. Afterwards though, Mass Man is going to be using perfect dodge which I can still get around by using Madara's Jutsu because he destroys perfect dodge with that. So that is why Kaguya is in the row right after Madara. Madara uses his Jutsu, I can hit him right afterwards with Kaguya's ultimate while his perfect dodge is gone. When it comes to Killer B, he is extremely good for this mission as well because he ignores perfect dodge on his ultimate, which means whenever it is ready, you can go ahead and fire it off on the later maps and for sure hit him. It's even better if he is limit broken and has his healing dupes. Mine doesn't have any healing dupes, but he is still useful here. And another cool thing I found out when it comes to fighting Masked Man is he cannot substitute when you are countering against him. That is why using someone like Killer B is extremely good. Also why the new Wisdom Minato has a counter. He can't avoid it so you're going to for sure get damage on him if it triggers. When it comes to the 6 path Naruto, he has a 600 self heal, 200 field heal, a 20% dodge buddy skill which goes great with Madara leaving him with 40% chance to dodge with my current setup. And also on his ultimate he ignores perfect dodge and substitution making it perfect no matter which map you are on. When it comes to my Susano Sasuke, I am bringing him not only because he's a nuker, but because he ignores perfect dodge on his ultimate, and if he has his first ability, he also ignores substitution. So he is also great to bring here if you don't have your own Minotaur. If you don't have him at all, he's not needed. Just grab someone else for extra healing if you want to be you know, extra safe, or grab anyone else that can show some good damage. When it comes to other successful runs, I have done this without using Kaguya, using the new Wisdom Minato instead. And I did move my Sasuke over to the second row so I don't have two Wisdom units on the same row. And it was definitely quicker, but it was a lot harder because I was missing out on a lot of healing and this is a bravery mission. The other few different variations I've done is I've used Blazing Fest Kakashi instead of Killer B, and then the Heart PC Hinata instead of Killer B. She's actually the best free to play unit for this raid and I will go over that in a little bit. On to the second map here, you see that 
Bassman put up his resistances again, but this time substitution is not a problem, so from here on out, he's not going to be doing that anymore. Now he has a whole new attack pattern. This time he's going to be doing a three turn countdown for his continuous attack, and he's going to perform a few regular attacks, a jutsu, which is going to target whoever is the farthest from him, and then his ultimate, which is going to be on the random side. If there is a wisdom character out on the field, he's going to target them with that. Afterwards, from that point on, he's going to use his Jutsu and Ultimate here and there. I will put his full attack pattern down in the description box for those who can't pick up on it. But the general idea is this map is by far the easiest one. You can heal up easily because he has a three turn countdown before his continuous and after the fact. And once that countdown for the continuous starts, it's a perfect opportunity to position your units away from each other so that you can't get super comboed and I will show you guys what type of formation I am talking about. From here on out I'm pretty much just going to keep damaging him whenever I get the opportunity which is when you know Killer B's ultimate is ready, Sage Naruto's ultimate is ready, use Madara's Jutsu and follow it with Kaguya's ultimate. Whatever I need to do to get his HP down as low as possible. Once it gets very very low I'm going to go ahead and stall back up for the next map. And another thing to keep in mind here is you might be here for extra long if you miscalculate it. It has happened to me two times in a row that I've gotten all of my chakra ready. I use Madara's Jutsu and he lives. And then he lives the next time I get my chakra back. You know, it's going to happen because he does have an insane amount of HP. But that's pretty much it for map two. Now going over that Hinata I mentioned earlier. She was the Phantom Castle reward from last month. And I did say she was the perfect unit for this mission and I'm going to go over the reasons why. She has three different things going for her. The first thing is her field skill. It allows her allies to anticipate the enemy's dodge. So the best example I can give is naturally on map 1, Masked Man has a 50% chance of dodging. But if Hinata's on the field and let's say you're using your 6 pad Naruto's Jutsu as close to her as possible she can give up to a 46% chance of anticipating the substitution. So what that really means is when you're using his Jutsu as close to Hinata as possible, his Jutsu actually has a 4% chance of missing instead of a 50% chance. So extremely helpful right there. The second thing is her sync skill. If she syncs up with other units from the Ninja Alliance, so for example if you have two other 6 Path Naruto's or 6 Path Naruto and Minato out on the field at the same time, she ignores substitution, period. So all of her attacks, Jutsu, Ultimate, will be for sure hitting him. And then later on, when it comes to the other two maps, her Jutsu naturally ignores Perfect Dodge. So you can always get a hit on Masked Man as long as she has her Jutsu. So she is extremely good to use here. I was using her at first, but after I figured out that Masked Man cannot avoid counters, that's when I decided to go with Killer B instead. Also, since I forgot to mention it earlier, Masked Man has a 100% chance of countering at all times. It can be outranged with a long range character, but it's something you want to keep in mind. Like, don't hit him if you don't need to, especially when he has perfect dodge up. Otherwise, you're just damaging yourself more for no reason.
On to the final boss here, we have Masked Man appearing with Kuruma. You cannot KO him. All of his spots have, according to someone on Reddit, 10 million HP. So, yeah, you're not KOing him. All of his attacks do 300 damage. And of course, we have Masked Man again. He is going to be attacking similar to how he was on the second map. No substitution whatsoever, just perfect dodge after he uses his ultimate. Now it's all about figuring out his attack pattern and when you can get your hits in, you know, your openings. And I will once again put in the description box the attack pattern for map 3 because it is kind of all over the place. Only things that you really need to pay attention to is whenever he has danger back to back. The first danger is going to be his jutsu, but the next danger, which is your opening to go ahead and go for an attack, is when he's going to go into a stance for three turns. When he's in this stance, if you attack him with a jutsu, he is going to negate it and then hit you with his ultimate again, which is going to deal like 4,400 damage, if I remember right. So twice the normal amount of damage if you're not paying attention. So you have to be very careful. I have done it several, several times because I'm so focused on when I have my opening kind of thing. But in general, the main thing is you want to have two units away from Masked Man while leaving one to stall against him. His Jutsu will continually chakra seal you, so whoever is in front, just keep in mind that they probably are not going to be getting back their chakra anytime soon. The best person to stall with in this situation is Six Path Madara, but I do need to make sure he has at least enough chakra for his Jutsu so I can follow up with Kaguya when her ultimate is ready, so I might have to switch him out with somebody else or put Six Path Naruto in the line of fire a few times. Aside from that, the rest of this mission is pretty much just surviving as long as you can until you get your ultimates and you find your openings. Positioning is very important. You do not want him to hit multiple characters with his Jutsu or ultimate. If he does do that, I highly recommend you reset it because there is a time where he might attack both the top and bottom row if you position yourself incorrectly. And on top of that, he will combo attack with Kuruma whenever he does his Tail Beast Bomb or Claw attack, so gotta keep that in mind. But that's pretty much all you need to know about his SS rank. You guys can go ahead and just see how I handle the rest of the raid from here on out.
And there you guys have it, Mass Man's SS Rank Guide. Hope this video helped you guys out, saw what you need to do to go about it. This is a team that I used to farm him to ultimate once I, you know, got the attack pattern down and figured out everything. Hope this video helped you guys out. Don't forget to leave a like, drop a comment, and subscribe. Peace.